Now we're going to spend some time talking about the IV tubing. And specifically, we're going to focus on the drip chamber, the roller clamp, and the end. So we're going to start with these three parts, the drip chamber, the roller clamp, and the end. Do not remove the blue cap from the end until we have spiked the bag and primed the tubing. Here's our drip chamber. On the top of the drip chamber is a spike. This spike is inserted into the IV bag or IV bottle. The drip chamber is a window to view the IV flow, and we can calculate the flow rate by counting drops per minute. Here's our vent cap. This sits on top of the drip chamber. We leave the vent cap closed for bags since bags do not need to fill with air. Bags collapse as they empty. However, the vent cap must be open for glass bottles since glass bottles need to fill with air as they empty. Here's our roller clamp. We adjust the roller clamp using our thumb. Inside the roller clamp, we can see the wheel crimp the tubing, controlling the flow. With the roller clamp open, the IV fluid flows wide open. By adjusting the roller clamp, we can carefully adjust or titrate the flow of IV fluid. By closing the roller clamp, we can stop the flow altogether. Let's take a close look at the IV bag. Here's the cap for the IV bag. We will remove the cap from the bag and insert the spike here. Here we are removing the cap from the bag by pulling on the ring. We will insert the spike here. It is important not to let the uncapped port of the IV bag touch anything, always maintaining asepsis. Never let the uncapped spike touch anything either. Again, always maintain asepsis. So let's spike a bag. First, close the roller clamp. Next, hold the view chamber and the IV bag like so. Remove the IV bag cap carefully. Maintain asepsis. Grasp the spike cap like this. Remove the spike cap carefully, maintaining asepsis. Insert the spike into the bag, pushing with a slight twist. Insert the spike completely, again pushing with a slight twist. Hang the bag to the hanger and give the view chamber a squeeze. One squeeze is all it takes to fill the chamber half full. Carefully open the roller clamp until the fluid enters the tubing. Allow the fluid to slowly prime the IV tubing. We want to allow the fluid to slowly pass through until it drips from the end. At this time, we want to be sure to purge all air bubbles from the tubing. Once all the air has been expelled from the tubing, we can go ahead and close the roller clamp. Now our tubing is primed and ready.